Thank you for attending the, the session. And you know, it's been a long day, probably you know the last part of the session. And uh, you know what's happening after the session? You know the welcome party and the expo opening. Yes. So thank you again. Thank you for attending the this I mean composable discovering Drupal next gen generation with a structured content. So this session is more about like the journey how we end up here. So my name is Jesus Manuel Olivas. You can find me as J M O L I V S in mostly like. Drupal places, GitHub places, and all those. I'm the CEO and co-founder at Octahedroid. Jorge is my business partner, he's also here. And, and what's Octahedroid is we're a forwarding, <coughs> like forward thinking development agency. We mostly do CMS work, tied with decoupled implementations like modern front end, you know, that kind of shiny new thing. And also joining me as a speaker is Ronald. Hi there, well, my name is Ronald Aguilar. I'm from Costa Rica, I'm senior Drupal and React developer, and I'm looking right now for my new journey, so if you <laughs> want to hire me, just let's talk. Uh, you yeah. like what you saw in the session, <laughs> and one sponsor. Well, let's talk about the agenda first. What we're gonna see in the session, it's, uh, as I was mentioning, we're going to talk about the journey, why, I mean, why are we here, and how we end up in this situation. You know, kind of like the movie, you know, this is me, and this is, I mean, I'm going to explain you why are we here. Uh, we're going to talk about some previous iteration, work we have done, also that guide us into the direction we are suggesting. What we are telling you here is what, you know, the way we work, and how we, you know, the uh, experience we have, and what we're suggesting you can do. Definitely you want to talk about challenges, you know, pain points we found during this process. You know, we're going to talk about, you know, Drupal as a composable CMS, what it is and, and what we think we should do. Which modules we suggest you to use in, in order to achieve this functionality and, you know, and a little demo at the end to show you I mean, what we have so far and how can you start trying this shiny new thing. Again, first topic, the journey. and. You know, how we are, I mean, why are we here? And more important, how we end up here? You know, what was the, the path that we just, I mean, in uh, the road that we just walk? And again, it's like, this has been a long journey. It's more than 14 years working with Drupal myself, about like 11 uh, years? No, 12, yeah. Something around. like that. Yeah, it's, something like that, similar. It's been a long journey on the Drupal world. Uh, myself, I've been contributing to several Drupal modules, you know. Working with several Drupal projects as monolith and you know drunk us decouple and some of the modules I've been contributing is Drupal console. I have knew you use Drupal console at some point, you know, like generating code, doing interacting with the Drupal site. Um, I be you know when the Jamstack thing started, you know, the build hooks module to triggering deploys to Netlify or you know other I mean cloud providers. And some of the most recent work is the GraphQL Compose module, the decoupled preview iframe and the visual editor, which is kind of part of this composable thing we are showing you. And I was like, I would like to add a little more about Drupal console, and not Drupal console itself, you know, how that somehow related to this time. So at that time when Drupal console happens, you know, it's like the moment that we were moving from D8, D7 to D8, a lot of things changed, and, and we decided to work into CLI to improve the, uh, the developer experience, because it was hard writing a module. And because at that time, not, not everyone was aware of what the needs are for, or had the knowledge to build a module. So we decided to contribute that project to make people, you know, life easier, provide a better developer experience. And I think we are at a similar situation at this very moment. You know, we are, this is Drupal, and this is Decoupled, and this is all new, and what the challenges are, and how can we, I mean, interact with, with Decoupled, how can we work with Drupal and Decoupled? So, so we are in a kind of similar situation. The goal of this journey is kind of trying to show you, you know, this is what we've done, this is what you can probably do. And you know, long story short, you know, Drupal console introduced a lot of like new features and you know, provide a valuable developer experience. And then fortunately, Drush decided to embrace those and you know, one less module to maintain. And that's always good. And well, a little thing, you know, Another part of the journey is, you know, all the different projects we have worked, as I mentioned, like Drupal, you know, like standard Drupal sites, decoupled sites, like building mobile apps from Drupal in, as an API, several projects, and, 
and that experiences were and you were really like trying to like from that from that from that experience you get all that knowledge and trying to put into modules contribute it back to the community so you can start trying those right away and well something also that really zooms to the uh, to the experiences we have been having experience with products or projects outside of the Drupal world, you know, like modern headless or modern decoupled CMSs like Sanity and Contelful and, you know, and HiGraph and all those. And probably the main difference we saw with those projects, or I would say products in, in Drupal is, you know, the direction those, the, the direction they have and the target, the target they serve. So they really focus on the editorial experience. They really focus on the user that it's entering content, you know, day by day, because it's the one who spent more time on, on the Drupal site. And similar to Drupal, you know, you can see here like, oh, we're focusing in the, you know, in the site builder or the uh, instead of editor or content editors, right, or marketers. Our goal for this on this what we're doing is making sure the people that is using Drupal in a daily basis is it it has an enjoyable experience. And, and you know, it's like, it's hard because you can, you keep hearing, you know, site builders and developers and, and you know, all those, but never, you, there's not a lot of thinking about the content editors. There's not a, a, lot, a lot about speaking about like marketing people, right? And in the end, we're gonna talk about some uh, previous iteration we have done in the past, like Paragraph with layout Paragraph and rendering React inside of those and a fully decoupled React app and the final version, which is, Basically, an iframe loading the front end side inside the node page. So let's talk about the, those previous iterations. So this is how the paragraph and layout paragraph, I mean, mm, project looks like. So we have this layout paragraph to you know, drag and drop paragraphs on the node, the node view page. And then you click on a particular paragraph and you can edit that on the side in the off canvas, you know, as a sidebar. So again, we are really taking advantage of Drupal, you know, editing content. But you know, the problem here that we saw, which is part of what makes this beautiful, is we are rendering the React component inside Drupal. So basically what you saw here on the, you know, the image and the text is the React component embedded on that Drupal view page. But for, in order to do that, we end up rendering or creating a React app, or one React app per, React, I mean, for, per paragraph, and that was like, no, no. So again, what we learn from that one? So what, what was good? You know, the drag and drop experience was way better than a standard go to edit page and drag and drop components. Because in this particular case, you were seeing that live preview of the decoupled component. And you were like moving up and down and drag and drop. It was great. The live preview experience was on save. So you edit something, click save, and then you get that preview, which just works perfectly. Some of the things that didn't went that good is the each paragraph was a React app. I mean, there's some workarounds for that, but that was kind of the easiest way to get that, and you know, because you needed to communicate from Twig and React and pull data, and there was way more complex than we anticipate. And you also need to build their React app, put it into a module, and the module was like deployed with Drupal, which is at some point is like forces to like duplicate the mapping between data and components. So for us, it was a good experience. The editorial experience was good, but the developer experience was not that good. That was a lot of work to get there. So what do we do after that? So we think, why don't we just take, oh, the whole editing part to React app? You know, that sounds smart at that time, but there was a lot of work. We end up mimicking the form API because all the sidebar you saw for editing that particular paragraph, it was also built on React, so we end up rebuilding the whole, I mean, form API again on React, which was probably not, not that smart after all. <laughs> so what was good? You know, it was a much better drag and drop experience because it was React, so we no longer have like Drupal jQuery or, actually the layer paragraph doesn't use like the jQuery UI for drag and drop, they use something else, Dragula I think it's called, which is better than, than jQuery, but in this particular case, the React drag and drop was much better. And we have like live editing preview. You're editing the component and you can immediately, you connect that to React. So as you were typing, you will see the changes. But you know what? Trying to get review. Preview, draft, 
published and published revisions. It was way more complicated, so it wasn't that good. It was a single app, which was great, but in the end, having to deploy a React app, standalone React app somewhere else, having to mimic and dupli duplicate the form API also was like not good. And finally, if you were having a, something uh, aside with JSON API, then you have a way to communicate back to your Drupal site. If you had GraphQL, you have a different way to communicate back. So again, it was way too much work. Good, it was a good editorial experience, but not like, I mean, it was hard for the developers. So yeah, you know, maybe we can try to find something easier. And this is what you will see. Uh, we end up with the easiest solution. Probably it doesn't like make a lot of sense for you. It's like it's an iframe. So that thing that you saw in the node edit is an iframe. So that iframe is loading the front end site. That seems like it's re it's an iframe, and we have a way to communicate. So basically, you can interact with the iframe component. We are embedding again the React app there, or the or it could be in this particular case we're not tied to React. It could be React, Vue, could be Azure, could be anything because it's an iframe. An iframe is living somewhere else where your front end is deployed. But not only that, you can interact with the front end part, click in a paragraph, and you will see the sidebar. It's open here. So what we have here, we are not only editing those paragraphs. The full node edit is on the sidebar, on the off canvas. It's already there. It's like going to edit but from the node page view. So you can go there, change things. You will see a demo of this at the end. But then, easily, again, you can interact with the front end, you know, clicking on a particular paragraph and boom, that happens. It gave me, it just show me the particular paragraph that I'm editing, take me to that place so I can edit. It means this support a lot of things. So what was good in this particular iteration? Well, full node edit, right, which is great. Instead of like only supporting editing a particular, piece of content, the whole node was editable. Preview is back on save, but I know there's some work, you know, Cosmic Frame is working on the thing, like mm -hmm. clicking things, and once you move away from the field, you know, I mean, save a preview so you can, I mean, save on the um, preview and you can see it. But again, still at this very moment, it's on save, or on clicking preview. Uh, but you know, this one provides support for publish, unpublish, draft, revision and content moderation. Because that part, it's handled by your front end site. So we are basically only giving, asking you, where is your site? W gave me the, you know, the, where your front end site is, and we, we and, uh, give you some instructions for you to communicate back to, the, to Drupal, basically by clicking elements on the front end site. And another great, I mean, benefits is we are not having like front end code duplication, mapping components, because everything is handled by your front end app. And finally, we are taking advantage fully of the Drupal form API. So we are not like duplicating any work. As you can see, it's like it's there. That sidebar thing, that form is Drupal. So we don't have to do anything other than clicking things, saving things, preview, preview everything works. And that's what we learned from that process, you know? And, you know, it's, it was, Quite an interesting journey. We learn from those mistakes. We kind of start from the most, you know, from a place. Then we go more complex, and in the end, let's go to the easier thing. You know, go to the iframe. You know, make make this thing easier. But which challenges did you figure out? Or you find out? We find out we need to prioritize to serve a structured content, right? We find out we need to improve separating content from presentation. Kind of to make Drupal behave as a content hub so we can serve like many purposes. So we can serve data to multiple clients. It's either a site, a mobile app, whatever. And you know, and, and, and funny thing is, once you full, you understand this, once you have a structured content, once you have a clear separation between content and, uh, and uh, visual attributes, as a side effect, you can improve your integration with design systems. Because you have the data, you can push the data to a design system, you know, this is my data, this is my, variant or this is whatever you want to call my token and just render this and make it look like that or render the same content or make it looks different and we I mean, will talk about that in a few and again support for preview publish unpublish you know for like draft content moderation revision and all those things and also we find out that we need to introduce this visual thing and make it easier for people to interact with their site so we can edit things and 
And you all might be thinking, this is, is this something new? You already know the answer. It's, it's not new. We've been dealing with this for so long, you know? And you've been working with Drupal enough, you know. I mean, this is not something new. And at some point, you probably work already with a Drupal project that provides you with way many different options. You know, Drupal, it's, you know, good thing about Drupal is give you a lot of options. A bad thing about Drupal is it gave you many options, right? So what has been there in the past, you know? How you structure content, and how can you like do this that we were talking about? Well, there's a lot of modules, like paragraph, like bricks, blocks, custom field, fragments for, you know, for the data, for the subfields, or like field double fields. There's things like basic data or storage entities, you know, for it, like more like building their own like node and field and things like that. And they're like same, you know, same page preview for, or you know, simple decouple preview for like previewing that, preview that, that particular content. There are things like layout builder or the experience builder now, or layout paragraph of Gutenberg for doing all this, like showing the user how the thing is gonna look like. So again, it's not, what we're trying to do is not new, it's just a different way probably of doing things, but maybe like learning from the different um, previous iterations and work. And again, as I was mentioning, I'm glad to hear like, oh, we're glad to hear like experience builder is coming, you know, they are like trying to get the best of layout builder and the best of paragraph. What that will be, we will see. And there's a couple of blog posts, one for Dries and the other one, I don't remember who wrote that thing, but there's, there's another. And I'm pretty sure there will be a lot more that coming, I mean, after all this thing. And well, so we're talking about you know, how can do Drupal, this, that, you know, the module, but what about things outside of Drupal? How about like modern CMSs? There's, again, a lot of tools, a lot of projects that you can take advantage of. And in Octahedra, we, we have played with some of those, you know, modern CMSs. And obviously, depending on the project size and the complexity, we decided to use, I mean, to decide to pick one or the other, but you know, but having that exposure outside of Drupal allows us to think in a different way. Allows us to, how can we bring what, which of those features we wanted to see in Drupal? I mean, how can we contribute that back? I mean, I want this on my Drupal site, so, you know? And most of the, our experience with those are giving us idea how to improve the editorial experience. And as an example, you know, this is how Sanity Studio look like, you know, you can, run this in your local computer if you want to, or use their, you know, their platform, and in the end, this is how it looks like. You have the content, you have the preview, you can click on things, and you can edit on a sidebar. There's a story block. How does it look like? You have your preview, you can click on things, and you have a sidebar for editing content. But, and those are like products, right? Like platforms or products. But how about open source? There are some, I mean, there are a couple of that, Allows you like having more control and maybe look like an airplane dashboard if you ask me to. <laughs> probably there's way too many options, probably more than you need. This kind of, for me, this looks more like a whistle wig, you know, because you have way more control. It just depends on the project. You might need something like this. You might need more something more simple where you can just interact with the front end, right? You have the preview, you click on things, edit the sidebar. And that's another one. So there's a plenty of, um, of, of projects and, oops, sorry, plenty of projects and all those have something in common, right? And it's not like most of them are built on React, which is true, but not relevant for today's session. Today's session is like they all, what they have in common is like they provide you structured content. Uh, they allow you to use that content to map those, I mean that to your design system. They support the couple implementations, and they allow you to, I mean, edit directly from a front end interaction. You know, click on something and edit and, and, and edit that particular piece of content. So, how we think Drupal as a composable CMS should look like? This is how where Ronald's gonna take it. Okay. So, what about composable? We heard about composable all the time, but what is actually composable? The idea of a composable CMS is uh, you can have something you can reuse, it's modular enough to uh, 
break everything into smaller components, uh, uh, having you know the the chance to reuse your content, separating your content from your presentation. So basically, we start to think about okay, how to do this in Drupal. So we went to the whole journey, or you know, basically uh, seeing uh, how to do it with paragraphs, how to do it with blocks, how to do it with storage, or, you know doing a lot of things. So basically the idea is to have something that could be modular. As I said, uh, you can broken down the content into smaller. We already have that, right? With paragraphs or with basically, as, you know, entities or other things we, we can work. Uh, we have this modularity in Drupal forever. So basically since the early days. Reusability, that's the thing we have to think more about because we can reuse content in Drupal. Yeah, we can do it with blocks, but blocks comes with a lot of things that are supposed to be there because a block needs to be part of a region or you have to do it like an, an external entity or, you know, basically uh, you are uh, getting a lot of things that are coming from blocks. So, uh, then content variations. The idea is we can uh, create different variations of, of the same content uh, to test. Uh, you can uh, basically optimize performance, having a different look and feel, uh, even for A-B testing, even for personalization, for example. But the idea is to be able to do that uh, without the need of creating more and more fields anytime because uh, you are creating content fields for something that is not content. So, and the content governance that we already have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, benefits of using Drupal for this content governance. We, we already have the permissions for roles, we already have the content moderation, we have a lot of tools we can use in, in that place. But these four are like the pillars or composable content, you know, in general, not, not only Drupal, but in general. So uh, let's talk about modern way to structure content. And the thing we are working on right now and the idea behind everything we, we are creating. So let's uh, imagine we have two nodes, right? So you can create component one, component two, but you need to reuse the component one again in the same node. Then you have component three, component four, and then you need uh, to use the component two Again, but in the in the second node. So basically, uh, we are talking about having different components, but you can reuse it. Uh, you know, it could be uh, in the same node. It could be in different nodes. It could be in different places. So then we have like, uh, okay, what is content and what is presentation, right? So let's let's think about having you know those fields for each component. So you have uh, for the component one, uh, you have the title and the long text in there. You are choosing the variation one, the background one, but then you are reusing the component one, but with the variation three and the background two, for example. So what is the way to do that in Drupal right now? So you have to do a lot of work around so having it in here and probably you'll add in fields to your content to having something like that, right? So we are separating basically content fields from settings. Uh, settings, well, I, I, I think it's settings, right? Because we asked that discussion, you we know, it, we, 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 don't, <laughs> we don't know if uh, calling settings attributes or something like that, but I think settings is more like universal, you know? Uh, so how to do it? This is, you know, uh, a little bit more advanced, but how to make this possible? So. Basically, we have a configuration uh, side of things that is the component type, similar to paragraph type, similar to, you know, uh, basically uh, any entity you create, uh, you have the configuration part. So you are defining your fields as the content definition, but at the time you are defining settings. So th those will be like a key value thing, uh, but the idea is to have this setting separate from the content fields. So you can just you know, say, I, I want to have variation, I want to have background color, I want to have hidden size, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to do related with presentation or 
not related to content. Uh, then we'll have the entity. So the entity will be living separated uh, as a composable component. So those are content instances, actually. Uh, and then we have the field. And the field is the one, the one we'll use in, in, the, in the node. So the field uh, will have a reference to that specific content instance, and then it's taking the settings value, uh, values from the settings definition, so you can basically change settings for uh, each piece of content you are creating. And the revisions for that specific field will live in the node, but the revisions for the uh, component or the content pins will live in separated in the entity. So I, the idea is you can configure if you want to uh, keep revisions or not depending on the piece of content you are creating. So, so how about the existing Drupal modules? As I talked before, blocks have something similar to this, but out of the box, it has functionality, you know, that is not supposed to use in this way. So you have like the regis placement, the context rules, uh, Basically, you have to work around to have something like this working with blocks. Um, you need to use the uh, inline entity form, so probably uh, when you come to revisions and previews, draft, and other things, you will have problems for sure. So then paragraphs, that basically most of us use paragraphs right now, but uh, paragraphs born like uh, something that means to be part of a parent uh, entity, so it it wasn't created to be reused. You can use a, like a paragraph library, you know, to reuse paragraphs, but it's still a workaround. It's something that uh, could be a headache if you uh, start having, you know, managing revisions and the databases are increasing and increasing. So it's a an known issue that works with, uh, with that we know uh, paragraphs have uh, for reusing content. Um, and basically, in both cases, the entity is, uh, you know, you, you start putting new fields in your content to manage the presentation, and that is not good. I think it's an internal discussion uh, that what is the real best way to do this. So basically, you know, vari variations, background colors, card styles, whatever you need to put in your component. So this is a small demo of what we are working right now. So I'll explain a little bit. So basically, you can see in here, this, uh, this is composable. So you have like the content and the settings. And you can change the, well, drop downs didn't work with the video, so. <laughs> but uh, you have like different options for each uh, setting. And you can uh, change your content and the content will change in both instances because basically it's the same content at the end. But what happens if you want those contents to look different? So you can play around with the settings. You can choose another variation, um, another background color, and that's it. You have like, uh, you know, same content, different styling. Uh, what about, uh, the second component, so let's change the, the look and feel as well. So the idea is, is there. So we are separating the content from the presentation. You can reuse your content whenever you, you want to reuse it. And what about uh, you know, changing the, the, the content in the second? Uh, in the second component. So it will work as expected. So basically, this is like the proof of concept. Uh, we are working on that right now, but the idea is uh, to have uh, like a better experience for editors actually. So. All of this started with uh, a conversation we had a time ago about what is people uh, getting out of Drupal. Uh, if us as developers love working with Drupal, probably site builders 
love working with Drupal because of the flexibility. But what about the editors and what about the marketers? That basically, uh, you know, uh, a good site builder can build a good experience for editors, but you know, a bad site builder can do totally the opposite, and you have like editors running away from Drupal and you know hating Drupal, and basically that's why we think Drupal is not getting traction between mm, you know most of the real users of the CMS. So the real user is the editor. It's the one that uses the CMS daily basis. So yeah, basically it's our priority is the editor experience. You can add new components inline or uh, the composable admin screen. So you, you have it separated. And the idea we are building like a content library similar to media, for example, but for content. So you can choose uh, uh, the content you want to reuse. Uh, you can see uh, at least at some, this in some way uh, the content you, you will be uh, putting in there. You can create or you can reuse. Uh, about revisions and governance, basically, Composable will configure revisions. So each component, uh, on each component, so you can uh, avoid the escalation issues we talk about. And uh, basically, for governance and rules and everything, we'll uh, use what is working well in Drupal, that the basically the all the content moderation permissions and everything, the idea is to have uh, all of them uh, in this composable project, so, uh, yeah. Okay, and, well, let me think, so this has, that's a lot of work, right? And so, what we propose to do this, so by, you know, while, you know, navigating this journey, this sea of problems, we could figure out the problem was bigger than we anticipate, and then we decided to, instead of having a single module, like split things into different things, and you know, the um, you know, and this is how we want to split, right? So we have split like the composable module, which basically is the one that is splitting again, having allowing you to manage the content, right? The structure, the content, the structure content, allowing you to split content from presentation. We have another module which is the decouple preview. So basically, this is the iframe that communicate from the back end to with the front end. And finally, we have the uh, visual editor, which is basically, this is the one that allows you to send signals from that iframe to the Drupal site and telling, you know, this is the paragraph that I'm editing, or this is the composable, you know, component that, my, that I'm editing, or, you know, I mean, maybe this is the blog that I'm editing. I mean, this is extendable. So again, it's this visual editor thing is the iframe. It's gonna work with things with Drupal out of the box. It doesn't, only we, will, we are not planning to force to work only with composable components. And this is all that we need. You know the answer, right? It's no, because you know, Drupal and you know, you already know the answer and you probably also know that just this famous, you know, phrase when installing something in Drupal, you know, it's like congratulations, you have nothing. You have, you know, you install Drupal and you have to do a lot of things. And, and that level, you know, that flexibility and level of customization is what makes Drupal so powerful, but at the same time, it's very complex. So we, we, what, we are here to, here to help you. So we are providing you with some other module, you know, some guidance. We are providing you with a starter kit and, uh, you know, a repo that you can just clone and start from it. So which modules we suggest you? We also split into three main topics, an API, right? So it's either, you can go either GraphQL, with GraphQL Compose, so you don't have to write your resolvers, anything like that, just go install GraphQL and GraphQL Compose and click things. It's kind of like JSON API extras, which you can go as a UI for clicking things and selecting what you want to expose, or you can just go JSON API and extras. Again, it's up to you. We need to have a way to authenticate and authorize, you know, because we're decoupling things. We need to handshake front end with back end. So again, simple out, which basically use, use consumers, some other modules that we use and suggested to use is like override not options and view unpublished and all that can help you to provide this, you know, publish and publish experience. There's GraphQL Compose Preview that creates a token for you that allow you to see draft content. Again, it's also part of the, I won't, I won't say distribution because it's, I mean, it's, we are still at this very moment we have a profile. It will be recipes once recipes are like functional 
which seems like they kind of are based on what we saw on the Trist note. And there's some other modules for caching and performance and optimization that we'll be releasing as well, like Revalidate, which basically, once you save a node, they will get the UUID and will allow you to push that ID on whenever your you know, API is, is uh, living. And also allow you to push like paths on Clutter or your CDN, whatever the CDN you are working. And some other things like Clutter images or Cloud Dynamic images, again, we're providing you with a set of tooling out of I mean, like fully functional packages that you will be able to use. And before jumping to the demo, I want to say special thanks to two developers that have really been helping us on, on building this set of modules. Uh, Alistair Munings from Australia and Andy Marquis from Denver. So they are been helping us a lot on this, discussing this and helping on building this. So if you want to give it a try to this, there is this repository here that you can just go use there. So similar to what Dries mentioned, I don't know what the name was, Star something. I, there is this, there is a repository, you just run either one rush command or just go to the interface and click things and you will have a fully functional Drupal site with all this setup out of the box. It also has a Next.js app or a rem or Remix app, just pick the one you want better and you can try this. And just let me go to the demo real quick, which basically is so simple that it's like this. This is a Drupal site. I uh, can go to my homepage here and what it's gonna load, it's, this is an iframe, right? So this is the iframe, this is the content node, so I can edit the note here. And, you know, if I click show title and then go preview, what's gonna happen is now it's preview the content, but this is on preview mode. So again, my live site hasn't changed, right? So this is a preview node, so basically, similar, the same functionality that Drupal provides you with out of the box with preview, you just click preview and it's there. Then my, you might be want to change something. Let's change this text. I click, you know, I click the front end, and this takes me to the sidebar, to the right place to edit. You know, so this is a demo. So preview again, and yeah, this is a demo. As you can see it here. But you know, let's save this one. So once I save, now it's as you can see now the route is saved. If I go preview you will see the route is the preview route. So basically we are just using the same running system on the front end so you can, I mean, you're handshaking things so you can do whatever you wanna do. Let me go back to the site. And what if I want to go and visit a previous review? Go here, go revisions. I wanna see this revision. You know, this, this is how, this, you know, this is how the, you know, the note used, used to look like, right? There's no title here, the text is here. Well, you know, what do you do in Drupal when you want to go to revision? Revert, just revert this one. Revert, and go to view, and now it's there. Again, where we're trying to, you know, we, the, point, the starting point we want to give you, we're working with decoupled integrations, is the same one as with not decoupled integrations. Support for previews, revisions, content moderation, you know, draft content, you know, anything that you already have. So we don't want to miss all those features that Drupal already have on those decoupled integrations. And I think that's, well, let me see. Where is my mouse? <laughs> Way too many screens. <laughs> well, where is my, yeah, it's here, yes. So, let's close this one. And thank you for that. So we got swag, Jorge has the swag. If you want this cute mascot, not mascot, mascot, because it's a cat, you can ask him for that and maybe we can take questions for the party or an upper reception if you want to. If not, feel free to ask. Uh, thank you, that was super interesting and really an exciting iteration on the history that you, you laid out from you know field groups to paragraphs and so on. One of the things that always struck me is difficult about any system that includes a library uh, like what you're describing creating and, and I include the media library in that is making the um, editorial experience of quickly and intuitively choosing the thing you want from the library at a time when you don't feel like sifting through possibly thousands of items. Yeah. Do you already have a plan for how to make that easy for people to use? Yeah, actually we have some ideas we are discussing right now. One idea is to uh, manage like uh, uh, checkbox. Uh, checkbox, you can uh, check when 
you want to reuse that piece of content. So you don't have all the content there, just the one you want to reuse. And the other one is to trying to manage tags, but just a specific tags for content. So basically you can uh, search through tags as well if you want to classify, you know, categorize your content as well. So uh, we are discussing about that, but I think that's the path we'll be following. Having both actually tags and you can select when you want to reuse that content. Great, that's awesome, thanks. Yeah. We're, happy to he we're happy to hear ideas. If you have something you can think yeah. of, let us know. We are totally open. <laughs> yeah, it's something something important. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, Go thank ahead. you. So uh, it's using a, an iframe, right? Yeah. So what kinds of accessibility considerations have you guys put into the iframe? Is it is it accessible for screen reader users? Good question <laughs> that we don't have an answer for. Yeah, and more than happy to discuss how can we improve that, how we make sure it's accessible, and this is something we definitely need to take a look and yeah. just take a note for that. So. We'll take that as a homework, and I'll make sure I get an answer for you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. You know, always working with iFriends is hard for accessible use. Oh, so yeah. yeah, it's something we, we have to revisit for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Great stuff, guys. Um, most of the uh, demo that we saw uh, was focusing on the desktop experience. And a little concerned because a lot of the pop-outs are quite large. How does this work on mobile? <laughs> Good question. But <laughs> my next question is, how often do you want to edit things on mobile? That obviously, there are some reasons that are in. We need to work on that definitely, and we can probably actually we can probably work together with what. And iP oh iPad, yeah, iPad, well, iPad, iPad, that will work, and that's and definitely like, you know, the drag and drop, you know, the drawer or off canvas, it's it's painful, mm -hmm. because it is, and unfortunately, there's not like a lot of like modern tools on Drupal. You know, there's jQuery UI, which is basically kind of outdated, but I mean, it's improving. So we'll yeah. need to figure out. Maybe w we can probably work with the uh, same, you know, with the off canvas, improving that, you know, the, the be how it mm -hmm. behaves, and maybe we can probably contribute it back. Yeah, and um, we also want to improve the visual editor, having like tools, having like a little toolbar for the visual editor of the off canvas, you know, so you can adapt to the, you know, environment you are using to, to edit. But it's, it's in progress as well. The idea is to, you know, go in there, but as we are starting the journey, actually, well, we have years of talking about this and months of planning, but we are starting the journey of building this. So the idea is to continue improving, improving, and we are so open for feedback and for contributors as well. No, actually, uh, it's not content. Uh, configuration is just a definition, but uh, settings are part of the field, but the content is like uh, a reference for the real piece of content. So uh, actually it's like a key value JSON on the database. So uh, that's the, the idea. That particular delta yeah, for the that specific uh, one. So you, you have settings for each instance of the content you are creating. So it's like a field. Thank you. Hello. Uh, currently, if I use paragraphs, right, and, and I, I would have additional fields, which is the problem you're trying to solve, uh, maybe uh, referencing a taxonomy, uh, I run into issues when I do a config export because then I have to worry about how am I going to move the, the taxonomy terms as well. Mm -hmm. That's why that's kind of like the use case that I'm thinking is how you are approaching this. Um, if I define my options, my styles. Mm -hmm. Are those something that I can config, export, and then bring to my production? Exactly. Definition. Yeah. The definition. So the definition is a configuration. The instance of those values is a store as a content. Yeah. On that particular delta where the content is referenced to the external content. It's kind of yeah. probably way too complex. We can probably go deep <laughs> yeah. on the open party with drinks and food. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, actually the definition is configuration. So you can export it and you can reuse it. 
you know, and you can work with your team, you know, basically keeping those settings. And it's something, uh, you know, important we didn't talk about this uh, composable. We separate the components because we uh, think there are things that are for decouple. And for example, composable will be something you can use in traditional Drupal as well. This is not exclusively for the couple, but, uh, and the idea, eventually the visual editor probably actually, as well. Yeah. Actually, we have, this, we have had discussions in the past, like maybe the visual editor can also work with non-decoupled sites because yeah. it's kind of like, you know, clicking on contextual edit, I mean, contextual links and edit that particular piece of content on the sidebar. So that's totally something we mm -hmm. can make it work with traditional Drupal sites yeah. and not only decoupled sites. But we're fo we, the, our main focus at this very moment is decouple because that's most of the work we do right now. But it's, there are chances to that might work. Yeah. I don't want to say that will for sure, but it will. <laughs> yeah. I, I have many questions, but I was thinking I, ca I, I can always wait for the party and yeah. ask you about them. <laughs> okay. We can take it to the party, too. Okay, yeah, Just thank get, you very much. Get a table and some beers. <laughs> and we got swag, stickers. Should I turn this?